Okay, welcome back. All right, we were, um, we just uh, took some time to look at one of the first uh, um, aspects of communication, which is listening. I hope uh, some of you have got to try that uh, table. If not, you could probably do that later, no problem. Um, the next thing that we're going to look at is speaking or expression or how do we do we talk okay expressions is all about talking and bringing about what our thoughts and what our minds have in mind okay so it like i did say um, communication if you need to have effective communication you need to listen as well as speak and uh, when you look at uh, the way people express themselves there are differences in the way people actually express themselves. So some are very emotional in the way that they talk. You know, they're always, um, their sentences will be all about, I feel, I feel, this is what I feel, this is what I feel we should do. And those who are more in the thought level or the cognitive level, they say, hey, you know, this is what I think. I think we should do this. I think this is what it is, I think, right? So we have different ways that we express right so some uh, state facts and look at uh, uh, you know what should be done more than their emotions and some are very tuned to their emotions when they talk okay some can be extremely loud when they talk you know and some can be extremely soft spoken right they always are very cautious and kind and polite and some they almost look like they're going to eat you up as they talk. <laughs> All right, uh, right. It's but they're different expressions of communication, right? So um, there, there's a lot that uh, scripture talks about when speaking, and let's look at some of some uh, verses uh, around. Okay, so Ephesians four twenty nine to thirty two. Can somebody uh, read that scripture? Ephesians four twenty nine to thirty two. Ephesians 4, 29 to 32. Do not use harmful words, but only helpful words, the kind that build up and provide what is needed, so that what you say will do good to those who hear you. And do not make God's Holy Spirit said, for the Spirit is God's mark of ownership on you, a guarantee that the day will come when God will set you free. Get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No, no more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. All right. Thank you. So when you look at this, um, uh, you know these three verses. There are very many instructions that's given in the way that we use words. Okay. It says use helpful words. Now, what all comes under helpful words? I'm, I'm not asking you for the words, but when you're saying helpful words, what are we trying to uh, say? Or what kind of, what, what does it do to the other person? What are those helpful words? OK, words of comfort. OK, words of upliftment. OK, sorry? Exalting them, okay. Words of encouragement, words of building up. What else? Words that bring a smile on their face. Okay, words of encouragement. Yes, Jackin, words of encouragement. Words of motivation. All right. So words that build up, and that's what it says. Huh? The word that kind that build up and provide what is needed. So what you will say it should also be good to those who hear it. You may think a certain word is good to hear, but that may not be what the others want to hear. Okay, so um, also when you look at verse thirty-one, it says, "No shouting, no insults, no hateful words." So, which means we we careful of the way that we talk, not with raised voices or raised agitation, emotion, or language. 
Okay, the kind of words that we use. Yes, Prince. In always. In all communication. Communication is not just with a husband and wife. In all ways. In all our communication, where we can be, which means even with the auto driver on the streets of Bangalore, right? Or with with the friend or with the spouse, whoever, right? So uh, it is to align our speaking with what we read in Ephesians, okay? All right. Uh, there is again a quick table, a check that you will see on the way that you speak to your spouse, and it's good that you can uh, look look at it. So the third part of it is not bought in the book, but I just want to bring about a feedback. Often when we are listening and talking, it's good to complete the loop with the feedback. The feedback is when someone is saying something to you, your feedback is saying, hey, this is what I heard you saying, or this is what I understand that you're saying. Because what does it do? It has two benefits. One is you have, you're actually sharing with the other person what you've understood. And you're also letting the other person know that you have understood, right? So it, it, uh, it has a lot of benefits. So a feedback always is, this is what I heard you saying, was that accurate? Or this is what I heard um, you sharing with me, is that what you wanted me to say? So a feedback is extremely important. Now when we look at, um, moving on, uh, Proverbs has a lot to speak about communication. Okay, Proverbs, and if you look at... Uh, it's page 77 in your books, but in the 74, thank you, 74 in uh, on the digital books, okay? So let's look at some, some of these proverbs and let's try and see how is this that you can apply to either your marriage or any other relationship, okay? So I'm going to bring up some of these verses and uh, let's look at how it can be applied to your marriage. Okay, let's look at the second one, Proverbs 12, 18. Thoughtless words can wound as deeply as any sword, but wisely spoken words can heal. So how do you apply this in marriage? Give me an example of a thoughtless word that can wound and a wisely spoken word that can heal in marriage. For example, when someone did a mistake, Instead of uh, reacting to it, telling you did it, you messed it up, you made it wrong. Instead of speaking without thinking how it affects, we should be careful and slowly tell them, hey, you did wrong. But next time, make sure you do it. Okay, so instead of reacting, uh, calm yourself down and then share. Okay, wonderful. All right. Yeah, there are many examples, I'm sure. Yeah, students, <laughs> you all can't escape now. I'm here with you all. OK, Jackin's written something. So let me read what Jackin's written. She's written, you're always like this, pointing immediately to their flaw. That's thoughtless. OK, right. OK, good. You know, something that I've noticed, and um, uh, we often say this very thoughtlessly, you're always like this. Right? We use the word always, or you're never, you will never change, or you're always late, you're always mean. Uh, actually, you should ask yourself, is that true? It's not an always, right? You may have one or two or three times that the person has not always been like, but that can be a very thoughtless statement, and that can bring about conflict. Okay, so that's again a thoughtless word. What are other thoughtless words? I know you will do it. Ah, so you always, that's I think that's what you're saying. Okay, what about wise words? Wisely spoken words? You can do better. You can do better. Okay, nice. Better luck next time. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, better luck next time. <laughs> yeah, so so sometimes um, you know, thoughtless thoughtless words could probably be um that's suppose you want to point something to somebody, a mistake or an issue to someone, right? Um let's say okay, someone's come uh, come home late, your spouse has come home late. So a thoughtless way of saying it is, um, you're, you're, uh, you're, you make me very angry because you always come late. Okay, the statement may be true, the content may be true, but the way it is said is very thoughtless, right? It makes them feel as if they're accused, right? So what is the better way of saying it? Say, you know, I feel lonely when you come late. Does does that sound better? Yeah, it sounds. Maybe the husband says, "Okay, I must come because I I don't want it to be lonely, right?" But then when you say you're always late, you know, you're very selfish. You only look after your own needs. You don't care whether I'm here or not. It's a thoughtless way of saying it, right? Okay, all right, good. Let's look at, at another one. Um, a gentle answer quiets anger, but a harsh one stirs it up. What is, how can you apply this in marriage? If you don't, like if you, uh, if there is something wrong and the person starts to um, like speak out in words and maybe in anger, then we have to say, okay, let me straight up this Okay, so sometimes just being quiet in itself could could calm somebody down instead of retaliating and saying something harsh. Okay, wonderful. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, the tone that we say, yeah, yes, because uh, the tone you use, gentle answer, or uh, when it says harsh one, it's like we are giving an answer, but in a harsh way. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it's more to do with our tone and how we are trying to comment. Okay, wonderful, nice. Uh, we'll do a last one. Proverbs twenty-seven fifteen. It's the fourth from the last. Um, a nagging wife is like water going drip, drip, drip on a rainy day. How do you apply this in marriage? Give some space, okay. Like, for example, nagging is to keep saying something, saying over and over and over and over again. Like, for example, let's say maybe the tap is not working, it's very similar to the, the tap is not working, and you say, Where's the plumber? Why didn't you call the plumber? Right. Yeah, I'm telling you from now. I told you ten times yesterday, twelve times today. Did you do it? Did you do it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So wife can do it. Yes. Um, or so how how do you not nag? Is to I mean one is to tell them that you know this is really important for me to get this done. Would you please rather than saying did you do it? Did you do it? Did you do it? Right, but sharing what how it means to you, okay, and yeah, um, if not, then getting it done yourself, all right, okay. Those kind of people huh? who you have to keep nagging, we don't want our relationship to get broken, uh, but if they are like us, who are, we, we are getting fed up because of this. How we can work on it, how we can. So I think the first thing to check to see is have you actually done what you have promised them to do? Right? So if you have promised I'll call the plumber and you don't do it, then you're giving a opening to that kind of a behavior, right? So first to check for yourself, okay, if I promise that person something, have I done it? Have I got it done? Right? Now, even after that gets done or Let's say it's some kind of a, maybe a behavior trait that the person's nagging you about. You know, I've told you don't do this, don't do this. You know, so then 
it needs it needs a communication needs an open sharing about how you feel about it and that something like this annoys you right that those 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 communications are difficult but nevertheless it has to be done okay all right we will look at um, what are some of the things that break down communication what breaks communication how do people stop communicating to one another what are some of the situations where people stop communicating to one another is pointless there isn't any hope or nothing can be done okay all right wonderful that that's good what else when it leads when there is a fear that it will lead to some fight when the peace is broken very good what else you feel misunderstood okay or if there are times that you're not seeing the same interest in the other person every time you go to talk to them they're doing something else they're not attentive yeah there's no there's no eye contact or like we said earlier if they um, whatever you say it will be bought back at a later time to you right if it's got back you said something and then when you're having a fight that situation comes back again they bring it back so that brings about a breakdown okay or you feel judged right when when you're saying something you say no don't feel like that it's not right you shouldn't be feeling angry at me or if there is hiding of emotions that's these are some of the times that there can be a communication breakdown now if you look at the table what causes communication breakdown there is some remedy that is suggested that you can do alongside with your spouse so if you are judged or criticized it's good that you come together and agree that whenever we are talking about feelings we will not be in a place of judgment but be in a place of acknowledging what does acknowledging mean acknowledging means hey i can hear that you are sad i hear that you're angry i hear that you're upset rather judging means you can't be upset or why are you feeling sad what's the reason for you this is such a simple thing you need you shouldn't be feeling sad that's judging or criticizing okay the second one is fear of uh, what you say will be held against you now this is something that you come to a like like a like an agreement with that whatever is being said will not be used as a retaliation it's not going to be rehashed back at you okay you come to an agreement disinterest in inattentiveness or being preoccupied is of course keeping away anything that is uh, buying your attention okay fear of being misunderstood it is it's something that you you need again need to talk about and make it a practice to listen to understand rather than listen to um answer or listen to speak too busy or no time to talk is where you set aside time and lastly suppression of emotions or choosing to hide feelings this happens only when you do it a lot more only when you're communicating a lot more do you build that trust to be able to share okay um we'll just take some time to understand the spiritual law of communication so we've looked at a very we've looked at practical aspects of communication but the next few things we're looking at is what what is the impact that um our words have okay on on people what is the impact it has or what is the significance our words have on people have on our spouse on our children and um uh, to to ensure that because the bible talks a lot about it right and how can we ensure that we are in alignment with what the word of god says so the first and important thing we need to understand there's a lot of power in our words right um you may be able to look back at your own lives think about something someone said to you it could be positive or it could be negative and how that really shaped your life any examples you can think of it yeah there are right maybe someone who said something 
that really encouraged you to pursue something or something somebody actually damaged. And this is usually we'll see in schools, right? Among teachers who would have said something to you, say, you will never grow up to be anything. And that kind of sticks. You heard that? Yeah. Right? Or uh, maybe even our homes. Right? Uh, you know, if you if you are like this, then this is what like they make certain proclamations at you, right? And remember that that's very very deep, and um, we can, uh, and because because of who we have, what who we are in Christ, we can break the effect and the impact of all of that on our lives. We can do that, right? Uh, but when we are looking, getting into marriage or getting into relationships with our children, remember that the power of words are very, it, it's strong. And let's look at what it does. So words can either bring us life or death, or it can bless or it can curse. Let's read Proverbs 18, 20 to 21. Can one of you read that? Proverbs 18, 20 to 21. You will have to live with the consequences of everything you say. What you say can preserve life or destroy it. So you must accept the consequences of your words. Right. So what we say definitely has an impact. It is what will shape our lives. Um, and it will also have a bearing on what is happening right now and what happens uh, in our future. And if if you know the declaration that we make every Sunday, right? That what we speak, how we speak, and we we uh, we keep declaring that we will speak God's word over our lives, because whatever we say, there are consequences to what we say, and that's what we we will bear. So our words um, can bring life or death, and what we say, we will we will bear the consequences of it. Okay. The next one is words can either build or destroy. So Romans 10, 17, can somebody read? So then faith comes from hearing the message and the message comes through preaching Christ. Okay. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, right? So the more that we are able to build faith, we, we begin to see a lot more of God's uh, work happening in our lives. So when, whenever we release words, we speak it in a way, way to build and nurture someone's faith, especially when it comes to our children. Right? They may come home with some bad marks. Right? How do we nurture faith? How do we build faith? With your children. Uh, so your children have come with some bad marks from school. How will you build faith? Yeah. Oh, you build faith with an eye, God. <laughs> Sorry? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, okay? Okay, you have the mind of Christ, right? Or you say, it's okay, this time we can do better, right? God's with you. God's helping you through through this, right? Yeah. So that's how we, we build faith and not destroy it. We must always choose to speak faith over every dead situation. We, we've seen that in Ezekiel, right? Even through every dead situation, even through dry bones, the word of God bought life. All right. Next one is your words will either release faith or it will release doubt. Matthew 17, 20. Can one of you read that? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Thank you. So it it's whatever the words that we release is that which builds our faith, that releases faith. Even for situations 
where you're not able to see an outcome. When you speak faith, you're releasing. When you when you're speaking words of faith, uh, you you're speaking faith into it. When you're speaking positive words, when you're speaking God's word, you're speaking faith into it. Like when when we're sick, we're speaking those words that will build our faith, that will bring about our healing. Okay, so it either releases faith or it releases doubt. So it's important to know that even when we are communicating with each other, we we want to bring words that bring life, that build, that bring blessing, and that which releases faith. Okay? All right. So um, if you look at James, um, James chapter 3, verses 2 to 12, it talks a lot about, uh, about uh, comparisons of... Um, of the tongue. Okay, so let's read that and try and see what comparison it brings about. Some, one, some of you can, one of you can read it loud, and then we look at the comparisons that um, James brings about. James chapter three, two to twelve. All of us often make mistakes, but if a person never make a mistake in what he says, he is perfect and is also able to control his whole being. We put a bit into the mouth of a horse to make it obey us, and we are able to make it go where we want. Or think of a ship, big as it is, as it is and driven by such strong winds, it can be steered by a very small rudder, and it goes wherever the pilot wants it to go. So it is with the tongue, small as it is. As it is, it can boast about great things. Just think how large a forest can be set on fire by a tiny flame. And the tongue is like a fire. It is a world of wrong, occupying its place in our bodies and spreading evil through our all being. It sets on fire in the entire cause of our existence with the fire that comes to it from hell itself. We humans are able to tame and have tamed all other creatures, wild animals and birds, reptiles and fish. But no one has ever been able to tame the tongue. It is evil and uncontrollable, full of deadly poison. We use it to go give thanks to our Lord and Father and also to curse other people who are created in the likeness of God. Word of thanksgiving and cursing pour out from the same mouth. My friends, this should not happen. No spring of water pours out sweet water and bitter water from the same opening. A fig tree, my friends, cannot be bare olives. A grapevine cannot bear figs. Nor can a salt spring produce sweet water. Okay, thank you, Prince. So when you look at this, this um, passage, what uh, what is what is the tongue likened to? What all other things the tongue is likened to? Fire, Fire. ship, uh, bit in the horse's mouth, right? So, uh, what do all three of this do? The fire, the bit, as well as the rudder. What does it all do? It controls, right? Like the bit, when you put the bit, in the mouth of the uh, horse, it will move where you want it to. When you move the rudder in a certain way, it will move. The direction, the direction changes. A small fire will cause a whole lot of, it cost a forest fire, all right? So it's saying, even though it is so small, even though the tongue is so small, that's what directs the course of your life, or it can create destruction. So even though it's the smallest muscle and it's the strongest muscle in your body, right? Yeah. Even though it's the smallest, but the strong it's the strongest muscle in your body that will that can change your entire course, change the entire uh, trajectory of things that's happening. Okay. So it says, what do we what do we need to do? We need to be and, and uh, James talks about that. In verse 9, he says, we use it to give thanks to God um, and also to curse other people. 
words of thanksgiving and cursing pour out from the same mouth. My friends, this should not happen. It cannot be. It's not possible. right? Because from the same mouth, you can't have two things. You can't have blessing and curse. You can't have life and death. You can't have destruction and being constructive. It cannot come. The uh, a same tree will not bear the same fruit, right? So we need to ensure that we keep um, keep careful of that. So we we are saved and sanctified through what we also say. Okay. So we should always speak life, speak faith, speak trust, speak belief. Okay. Things that are positive. And uh, another thing that happens with words is. It's with your mouth that you speak a blessing over people, over your spouse, over your children. Um, uh, you would read in, you know, uh, uh, during in, in the in the Old Testament, the Israelites. God is the one who told Moses and uh, uh, to commanded Moses to tell Aaron to speak a blessing to the people. And that's what's written in that verse. It says, may the Lord bless you and take care of you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Right? And if they pronounce my name as a blessing about the people of Israel, I will bless them. So God has taught, taught the priests, the Levite priests, to bring about a blessing to the people. And through that, and that's an important principle that we need to be able to speak a blessing, not just to our spouse, to our children, but to our, our lives, our present, our future, declaring the blessing of God. Okay? Are you all with me? Everyone seems to be a little sleepy here. Okay. I have a question. Someone's written a question. Sorry, Jack, and I completely missed this. Let me read that. Uh, sometimes our facial express expressions doesn't match with what is going on in our mind. We may need some time to cool. We try to be silent. But then when others try to provoke or question us based on our expression, how do we quickly deal wisely with our emotions and wo words so we don't go overboard? OK, good question for my students here who are sleepy. OK, so she asked. Um, when others try to provoke or question us based on our expression, how do we deal with it wisely? With our emotions and words, so we don't go overboard. She said wisely. What can we do? Uh, how, how? She's saying, how, what do you say? Can you give me some time? Okay, wonderful. Can you give me some time? I'll be I can I'll be okay or I'll come back and talk to you. Okay. Jacqueline, you've got wise words here. Okay, what else? What about the others? Huh? <laughs> what is she? I need to chill. <laughs> okay, I need to chill. What would you say, Radha? Okay, so she said, I'm a little distracted. I need some time. I want to be alone for some time. Okay. <laughs> One last person here who hasn't answered. <laughs> okay, someone said, Prince said he won't say anything at all. Okay. Francis, Francis sorry. Prince, Prince Francis. Okay, sorry. So Francis says he won't say anything at all. Okay. So um, uh, if you need to quickly, wisely deal with that, I mean, I agree with with a lot of what what is said over here. Um, it's again. It I think it also matters who you're talking to, right? Now, if it is a a husband or a spouse. Um, I would say something like, yeah, I, I am upset right now, or I feel angry right now, but maybe I'm not in a place to talk about it, or if I do talk about it, I may say things that may go overboard or that may 
not be helpful. So I'd like to talk about this, but would you give me some time? So if it's a spouse, I would go a little bit more in detail. Um, if it's if it's not, if it's like a friend, they say I would say, yeah, something's bothering me, but I can come back and talk about it later, or you know, I have it in, in check, or I've spoken to somebody else, I'll be fine. So whatever, I think it also depends on the kind of relationship that you're sharing with this person. Okay, all right. So the last part of it uh, that we're going to look at is the word of God, which is our, which is the weapon that we can use against the power of darkness, right? Ephesians 6, 17, it says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we take the word of God as the sword of the spirit and wield it against any attack of the enemy. And that's what that's how powerful the word is. God's word is living and active, right? And and it is it can be used for our correction, for our rebuking, for our growth. So we must get into the discipline of speaking God's word word uh, in faith over our situations, over our marriage. Okay. Um, so yeah. So when we when we look at communication, it's it's uh, it's extremely important. Remember, it's just not a natural um, skill, but there is a whole lot of spiritual understanding. There are it is guided. It is affected by certain spiritual laws. So always, whenever we speak, whether it's to our spouse, our, um, our children, or others, let's look at speaking in line with what God's word says and how he wants us to correctly use it so our lives and our marriages are blessed. All right? OK, good. I'm open to taking questions. I have a good 10 to 15 minutes. Um, to spare for questions. For those of you who are, who are probably married, there is um, on the next page there is the application that's there. So if if there are certain things that you may find that are conflicting in your relationship, you can you can talk it out with your spouse discuss those matters, bring it up and discuss it. Because uh, whatever is unaddressed will rot, will fester. Okay? All right, yeah. So any any questions, any thoughts, any um, reflections? I haven't heard from the online students today because I'm here with the students. I got them to interact. Online students? OK, in-person students, any question? OK, Francis has a question. Yes, Francis. So not regarding the thinking and communication, so nearly I'm talking to one of my friends. He wants to marry with, without responsibilities. He wants to marry? Without responsibilities. Like if he's saying, like, uh, if I married, uh, then wife, parents, my parents, I need to take care about them, then children. Okay. I need to spend money for children. I don't want that and all, okay. but I want to marry. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so how I can answer to that person? Tell him he can't have, he can't cut the cake and also eat it. He has to do one of the two. <laughs> See, I think that that's probably it's just a lack of understanding about what marriage will bring. It's a lack of understanding that 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 these responsibilities are a burden. Right? He already have a relationship like as a girlfriend relationship. Okay. So he is talking with sharing he's an uh, not a believer. Okay. So he's sharing with me this is what happened, like okay. Then I said okay, then go marry. No, 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 no. Don't I won't marry. We, no, this much of responsibilities are there. I would not want to take a headache. Uh -huh. So, like, and he's talking how are you can answer to that? Yeah, so tell him he needs to really prepare himself that if he thinks that marriage is without responsibilities, it's a lie. It's a lie. There, there are responsibilities, 
and that's something as a man um, uh, th th there are God ordained responsibilities that needs to be taken care of right so uh, I'd say tell him to hold on and prepare himself to know what all are things that he would need to manage and only then get into marriage and if he if he feels he can't take responsibilities it's a good decision let him not get married it's a good decision don't get married huh yeah you can share you can share what you're learning yeah okay any other question Trying to frame your question. Okay, take your time. Take your time, frame it. Uh, like, if we know, like, someone uh, had a crush or uh, someone loves us, but at the same time, if they are our friend, uh, and how we can uh, have communication with them if we know that. Even if we are trying to have a good conversation, but uh, it was uh, leading to wrong way. Wrong way in the sense, like even if we are trying to communicate with them in a good way, uh -huh. but if they are uh, taking it as a relationship conversation, how we can communicate? How we can respond to it? And uh, is that okay? Like, uh, if we like someone, if we thought of. Uh, uh, getting into marriage with them is it okay to communicate with them uh, or not okay so there are two questions you ask one is uh, how if when you like somebody I think you're meaning romantically right that's what you mean as in sense of love you lo want to get married to them or you have a you love them in every way you see they are very supportive they are very good in nature but you have a crush, infatuation on them. No, uh, the two questions is like one, two are I understood the second question. The first question is what I'm trying to ask. Uh, like, uh, it's, uh, it's like uh, they are our friends, but uh, they have uh, this uh, thought of getting into marriage, but we don't have it. Oh, someone likes you, yeah. they feel they want to get married to you, but you don't have such a. Ah, okay, now I got it. Okay. And uh you said how do you communicate without them taking it in in the got it now i understood okay so um okay th this has a lot of probably not just with communication but maybe a lot of other ideas uh so the first thing is let's say as a young man or as a young woman you know that someone has a liking towards you and you're not interested in in taking that relationship forward you're okay just to be you know like a normal friend uh, I think we need to use some wisdom there right because the mindset that you have is I'm very clear that is nothing happening here but the person who you're talking to is on a different mindset and you know that so with the wisdom, uh, with wisdom, you you should be careful in the way that you communicate to them. Because when you know that someone has an affection for you and you um, feed into that, what do I mean by feed into that is spending time with them, communicating with them, you know, asking them, maybe texting them, how are you? Did you have lunch? Did you have dinner? When you're doing some... Sorry? Okay, so that's what I said. You need to use wisdom to do that. Because if it leads them to believe that you do like them, you are actually... Sorry? Yeah, you're, you're probably deceiving that, them in the sense of dece deceiving them to think that you care for them in a different way. That's what I meant. Deceiving them to think 
that you care for them in a different way. And if you want to keep those boundaries, it may it may be hurtful to you know just treat them like every other, but then I think that's a good protective factor for you to to not lead them on to believe that you care for them. And you may need to have very strict boundaries in how you deal with that because you don't want them to um, you know feel that sense that okay, uh, because a person who is in love or in infatuation doesn't think, right? They will look for any sign to make them say, oh, okay, this person likes me, that person likes me. So if you're the person who is very clear about your boundaries, you need to place that boundary. Okay, that's what I think. Anyone else has any answer or more knowledgeable people who've been through situations like that? <laughs> Wait, and you said one more question, which is, uh, ah, is it okay to talk to someone if you are, okay, all right. So I, I personally would say, now this is a personal remark, is that um, I have a son, 18, year, 18 years and 14 years daughter, okay? If they like someone, I will totally uh, um, dissuade them from, telling the, the person that they like. This way it means I will object to it. Why? Because they're not in a position where they should be having having conversations of, uh, you know, that they like somebody or not. Why? Because they're still 18 and 14 and they're still doing, uh, you know, they're still studying and they are, that's their current calling that they have. Okay? But if they were at a different, let's say they were 24, maybe 22, 24, 22, and then they came to me, I would, I would definitely, first of all, I would ask them, how prepared are they for, number one, what is the reason for why they're saying something? Is it towards marriage or is it just to have fun? If, if, if that's not the case, if it's not towards marriage, I'll say wait till a time that you are willing to have a relationship that looks towards marriage and not just for the sake of trying out a relationship. Okay, There should be the right reasons for why you want to date someone, if I'm using the word. right? It should be for the reason of marriage. And that's one thing that I will check. I said, is this for marriage? Uh, if it's just to get to know someone, you can do that even in a group. You can do that among other, you know, when you're with others. You don't have to do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You could get to know uh, through a group. And then if the interest grows, when you're ready, when you're prepared, you know, then is when you're approached. And when I mean by prepared, it's also ensuring that you are, you know, you have a stable um, work that you're doing. You know what God's calling you to do. You have your finances in place. You know how to take care of your own self and not depend on your parents on that, right? That's a point of time that you can maybe, I, I personally think is when you should you can consider. Till then, if nothing is sorted out, if you're still dependent on your parents, if you still are not sure whether you want to marry the person or not, if you're still not completely into a career, if you still don't know what God's calling you to do, then sort that out first before you do the next. It's actually uh, very uh, nice and helpful. Uh, I agree to it, ma'am. But what if, like, we are in the process, like, we are in the process of making our career, fixing our goals, and achieving towards it? But uh, what if we are in a place of, like, how you told, uh, okay, let me fix my career. Let me just get stable in my standard of living, and where I come to a place of taking care of the other person when i reach to that point i will just go approach them and i will tell. Mm. but what if in this process of we lose them mm. okay. so uh okay that's where i think uh you know you come to a place of uh knowing what what god is guiding you to do and we spoke about that right guidance so what's god guiding you to do Again, let's say you're not in a place where you have a career, right? And you're aware of that, but you have an interest to somebody. It's okay to express an interest to someone, but also 
maybe letting them know that you know there is this part of it that is still not sorted out what if they say no then then you have to let go right yeah yeah so that's all you can say so he said okay you work on it and then if i'm free then or if i'm if i'm available then then you come and then so they could say that as well right yeah so that's how you that's why you we use the guidance of god and say god is this a right time for me to approach someone when this is not there right and see what god guides you to do it is it i i don't think there's a tap answer to all of this but going with the guidance of god if if you're prepared in most ways you know god will god will help and bless your your decision you know if it is according to his desire and his guidance okay any other question you had a question no. you had an answer ah oh, please please say so to the first question no go ahead francis so i don't know is right or wrong like say like you one person like want to see another person is as a friend but that person like him uh, okay we can say like okay i'm not interested like us that way again he is like texting your conversation starting that is his fault like they that person is making way to that mm, person get into that exactly yeah i think that same thing so stop the said. conversation yeah it's the safest thing to do yeah. no <laughs> okay <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I hope there aren't any other questions. All right. Then we'll just close with a word of prayer. Can one of you close with a word of prayer, please? Father God, we thank you in this. Thank you for you in this time and um, uh, whatever we learn from this class, so that we can. Uh, we we can apply in our life when we'll get married and uh, we submit this class into your hand all the students into your hand and jin ma'am into your hand in jesus name i pray amen amen thank you all thank you students thank you online students we'll meet with you next week thank you